Hello, hello, and welcome, or should I say, ho, 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 Christmas cousins. I'm Cousin Chad. And I'm Cousin Seth. And Cousin Seth, this is very exciting because we are joined once again with a very special guest. But before we bring her on, even though she's already here and staring at us, Seth, but who wouldn't want to stare at you longer, Seth? We are the Christmas cousins. I'm Cousin Chad. I'm a lover of the seasons, the holidays, and it turns out my Cousin Seth was not. He was just meandering about his days, enjoying nothing. Going to the stores and getting his black coffee. Didn't know a pumpkin from a pumpkin spice. So I said, Seth, let's record this all. Let's do a journey of me taking you through the seasons, through the holidays, and enhance your life a little bit. Have some fun along the way. And now it's grown up to an amazing, what are we up to? 26.2 million daily listeners or some number that uh, we hand counted and didn't at all make up. Right, Seth? Something like that? Absolutely. We can verify it and everything. We have we all the temperatures, the little tally marks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Seth hand counted them all. Mm-hmm. But more importantly than Seth today, we have once again joining us, friend of the show, actor, singer, writer, producer, and future Hollywood icon. I said it, and don't forget Jersey Girl. We have on Kerry Francis. Kerry, thank you for joining us again. Hello. Thank you so much for having me back. back. I am one of those 26.2 million listeners, so this is yes. very exciting. <laughs> oh, I love to hear it. Thank you. Yes. Well, Kerry, out of all those things I just said, actor, singer, writer, producer, and Jersey Girl, which are you most proud of? Obviously being a Jersey girl through and through. And go. special bonus, we're actually recording this while I'm in New Jersey for once. So it's going to have a little special extra something, I think. Did you do your whole routine before? Did you do your gym, your tanning, your laundry before coming on air? And a little fist stuff. pumping. Yeah, I hit oh, up nice. DJs. You know, just got all of the clubbing done this morning. Oh, oh that's, mm. Seth, that's what we like, you know, this is, this is <laughs> yeah, Kerry's theme music. It's still going. It's, uh, <laughs> I know that, well, I don't know, the Jersey Shore show fell off or other things, mm. but yeah, that, that, uh, it's still alive there. It's alive it and well. Yeah, I think we learned last time that we're all actually really cousins and we'll have to do mm-hmm. a summer house. That'll be our oh. spin off. That would, that, would be, that would be incredible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Quite the shower. Yeah, <laughs> I love that idea, Kerry. That Our was the Christmas cousins. Kerry and the Christmas cousins on the Jersey Shore for the whole summer. See? Kerry, we need to have you on an off-season show, like in the summer, where we review sets like couple summers at the Jersey Shore in Seaside Heights, <laughs> wild times. I like he, he gets embarrassed. Twenty-four yeah, that would hour be a, cameras. I can't wait. I we'll love just that. watch you sleep. Yeah, well, it's Kerry, a crazy. Yeah, I would watch Seth sleep. Everything he does is fascinating <laughs> to me. But Carrie, so you're always up to a lot of different things. You're okay. starring in in different uh, shows and movies and things. And and you also sing, of course, as we said, you're writing, you're adapting some books, you're producing things. Um, so tell us, uh, you were in Knives Out, and that was probably one of the bigger things that you were in, and we touched on it last time as well. How's that going? Has it has it transferred into other opportunities? Was that one of your favorite roles? Tell me a little bit more about Knives Out, because that's a huge... That's a huge one. It is, yeah. So I just filmed the next Knives Out, so the third movie in the series, and that will be called Wake Up Dead Man. And I can say that because Netflix put it out there, so I'm allowed to say that. I know that for sure. Um, Ooh, breaking news. Breaking news on The Christmas Cousins. Yeah, it's the third one in the series, and the same Daniel Craig character, but a whole new set, a whole new um, environment, and a whole new story. So I think people are really going to like it. Wow. Yeah, it's really fun. We spent the summer in London doing that. And London, I'll have you all know, nothing like New Jersey. So uh, a new experience, a new experience. (laughs) It's old Jersey over there from what I understand. It's old Jersey. Yes, that's right. Yeah, no, but it was a blast. Really great. And what is your role in this? I know that I can't say that. So I can tell you that I'm in it and um, the rest of the cast is is out in the world. So it's really exciting. It's um, Glenn Close and Mila Kunis, Daniel Craig, of course, Josh O'Connor, Kerry Washington, just a bevy of really exciting talent. So um, I'm really excited. I'm really lucky. I'm, I'm so glad I live in a world where I get a script and and a phone call that says, here's the role. What do you think? And um, I just can't wait for people to see it. So that should be Thanksgiving 2025. Wow, that nice. is so exciting. Love yeah. that. So, Carrie, when you get this, bring us back because this is exciting. Not everybody gets this opportunity. Where are you? And is it your agent that calls? And do you, do you, did you audition? You didn't have to because you were already in the other Knives Out. 
That's right. Yeah. I, I am incredibly, incredibly blessed and lucky that I don't have to audition for these projects with this team. And um, no, I, I actually just had the, I think we might've been on a hike actually. I don't even know if he called me, but it was the director writer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're very good friends. And so um, when we were, we were, maybe we were at a lunch and we were talking about this and the next season of Poker Face, which I'm also supposed to be filming this fall. So We'll wow. find out if that comes to be, um, but yeah, something uh, along those lines as well for Poker Face this fall. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of jumping up and down and um, I do pitch myself often for other roles. Like I'll pitch myself for the much bigger roles, but um, we just kind of enjoy that over lunch and, and laugh about it later because he's always correct what role to right. give me. So yeah, I'm, it's, it's awesome to not have to um audition and to just get to show up and all my friends are there and it's it's really special yeah especially when you've done a couple and then you're like yeah. wow you get to know the cast the crew and everything and and just yeah. to have that so what what did you do when you got that word to so you that they said look you're going to be in london you'll be working all summer because as a you know freelance actor it's always job to job basically even yeah. no matter what level you're at uh, were you there all summer long no i wasn't i was there for two little chunks so i was there okay. came back went back um, I did. I was very lucky. I got to have my mom come out and visit on the second cool. trip and we got to do a day trip to Paris. And it's always neat when I'm sure you guys know within your family, when they hear you're doing a podcast, it's like, OK, you know, that's cool. But when you're related to people, it's hard sometimes to see them totally or, or really get what anyone else does for work. So I think it's right. always helpful to have family or friends visit and go, oh, this is like your job. You're doing like yeah. this is not like right. community theater. You know, this is a five-star luxury hotel and a driver. So <laughs> right. I think that really helps. Um, it's the build up to here. Oh, you're not just on screen now. It's like, there's things that go on. And yeah. Yeah. This is your career. Steps. And yeah. <laughs> and I think it's neat to, to, for her to see also that I have this group of really great filmmakers and people who care so much. And, um, you know, her flight was delayed like horribly from Newark. I'm sure you guys have had some Newark experiences um, oh, yeah. and like delayed like 24 oh, yes. hours, not like a couple hours, like a really bad. Oh, my and she God. couldn't believe that like the team of producers and the transportation team and that everyone was so on it for her. Um, and I think that really helped kind of reshape some of these thoughts. So, yeah, it was, it was right, a really wow. great time. And um, so cool. Yeah, what did really she do growing up for work. Uh, music teacher. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, forever yeah, and ever. Very music different teacher. world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and more, more solid, more, more stable. So it can be hard sometimes to explain to people. So, yeah, yeah, that was great, and it was really neat to walk into a world where, you know, Daniel Craig is this big fancy movie star, turned right. to me and put his arms open and knew exactly who I was, and his whole team knew who I was, and his security people knew who I was, and I thought that's so cool that they remember from that many I years love ago. That. Yeah, wow. yeah. Carrie, really really do you think they, they know you from the other Knives Out or from your previous appearances on the Christmas Cousins podcast or you really couldn't tell which one? Um, I think it's both. So the first thing that Daniel oh. said, obviously, was Christmas Cousins all the way. And I was like, right. That's right. Okay, yeah. right. Hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it might be Knives Out. I think it might be Knives Out. But um, right. it is always reviews under anonymous. I'm like, okay. come right. on. Perfect. We know it. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure he would love to do an episode. So. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Um, we, he's been writing us a lot, Carrie. And we're like, you know, we'll talk to Carrie. And if she says you're cool, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. we'll have you on. But right. we have yeah. our own superstar. In we'll decide. Staff. That's right. Yeah, exactly. But that's so exciting. So not this Thanksgiving, but a year. We have to wait a whole year for this to come out. Yes. Watch. Yeah. And it'll. Uh, I'm sure it'll go into theaters briefly. I'm not totally sure. And then it'll be on Netflix, <laughs> which is really exciting. It'll be the first time I'm actually on Netflix out of all of these years of work. So I can't wait for Very that. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Seth, yeah. We, we had Carrie on last time. She had so many things going on. And to be able mm -hmm. to see you, Carrie, still, you know, moving up and doing all these things is very exciting. And it's exciting to share the journey and to have you on to hear about. So congratulations for all that success. Thank and you so much. Yeah. And I still have all it. my yeah. paws in the Hallmark world. So stay tuned. We've got lots Ooh. of Christmas scripts and Christmas development and Christmas books and things that are happening. So don't worry, guys. We're going to get there. So Good. because you're adapting uh, a couple, is that for Christmas? You're, I know you're adapting some books and things. Are those for Christmas movies or other movies? Yeah. So one of them is a Christmas trio. It's a three three book series. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. It's really great. And that is currently sitting on the desks at Hallmark and Great American and all of those places. Oh, wow. um, and then I just adapted or I just got the rights to a new book that is not Christmas, but it's really, really exciting. And it's it's small town to New York City and 
You guys are going to love it. It's so fun. And then I adapted my Christmas single for Christmas into a feature film as well. So we've wow. got a lot of things going on. Yeah. That's right. You, you've been working on that, I know, for a while. You mentioned yes. that. So it's so oh great. Gosh. I know these things take a while, but it's great to see them still moving forward. Absolutely. It doesn't always happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, one year to have four features out and two book adaptions. That's that's really a wild amount of things. So yeah. it's exciting, guys. It's so fun. I'm yeah. so happy to oh. be back here talking about it. So it is. That is so great. And we are so we're loving that. We're loving yeah. Chris. Chris, Chris, Seth, one of our Christmas cousins is just yeah. making it and, and, and skyrocketing. I love it. We love to see it, Carrie. This is really cool. And today you're gracing us and joining us because we have something in the same space. We are going to be reviewing the brand new Hallmark Haunted Wedding that just came out this past weekend as of the time of recording. Uh, and this one seems to be already polarizing from some things I've read about it oh. and some text I've gotten from Cousin Seth, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. oh, he has very strong, <laughs> very strong feelings about this. So I'm going to give just a quick synopsis. So Seth and Carrie, you both got to watch the whole movie so far, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I did as well. So uh, I do have a few uh, notes just for people who haven't seen it yet. Here we go. So Haunted Wedding, they're two ghost hunters. Brian and Karen, Brian's Dominic Sherwood, Jana is Janelle Parrish, who's been in a ton of these. They plan their dream wedding at the Erie Keystone Manor, which is an, where, a place where these 18th century spirits roam, which is really a beautiful spot. They've actually filmed other Hallmark movies at the same location, I looked it up because I was like, this looks very familiar. Okay. So they propose, uh, he, Brian proposes to Jana on a ghost hunt, which of course everybody does that. Uh, and they must now deal with this manor's resident ghost, Angelique de Mornay, who I think Seth dated, like, oh, this is a Jersey Shore day as well. <laughs> but she haunts the halls in a wedding dress, grieving her lost love, Malcolm Buchanan. But there's a twist. Brian bears a striking resemblance to Malcolm, igniting Angelique's jealousy and creating chaos. So to get their own wedding back on track, Brian and Janet must reunite these two ghostly lovers, which leads to, and I'm not giving anything away because we all know how these end, but there's a spectral double wedding finale going on, which is really exciting here. I I, I thought this is such a, a cool overall idea here, but I want to get into you guys. We're going to do it a little differently as we discuss. We're going to do some segments. So. Let's go over the first segment that I'm calling the haunt or the hype. Was it love at first sight or did it ghost you? So this segment, we're going to discuss your overall feelings about the movie. Was it fun and engaging? Did it drag on like a zombie in a rom-com? Does it, does it belong in Halloween classics or should it have stayed in the crypt? So Carrie, you're our very special guest. Would you grace us and let us know what do you think first about the overall did you love this movie? Did you not like this movie? I actually really enjoyed it. I have a soft spot for Janelle Parrish. I think she's terrific. So anytime I see her in one of these movies, I get very excited. And I'm also a big Jeff Beasley fan. He was the director. And then mm -hmm. uh, Nina Weinman, I want to say. Yeah, Nina Weinman um, wrote it. And she's written a lot of my favorite. She and Julie Sherman Wolf are like my favorite homework writers. So anytime I see those names on things, I get really excited. Um, mm -hmm. there was a brief part kind of in the middle, maybe three fourths through where they did lose me a little bit to flipping through a magazine and, um, you know, getting comfy on the couch. There was a, a bit of a lull there, but overall right. I would say I love it and I wouldn't ghost it. Wow. Oh, I like, and she wouldn't ghost it. I like that little twist there. Now mm -hmm. we, uh, we have had Julie Sherman Wolf on the show. She was fantastic. Uh, and so it was really cool talking to her cause she's written some of my favorite Hallmark ones. I don't know which other ones Nina has done, but obviously this one, uh, and I'll have to check out some others that she's done. Yeah. So you liked it overall. You wouldn't ghost it. I like that. Seth, what were your, wait, I actually, I, Carrie, are you ready for this? I already know. What's <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous as well. I, I, I don't think Seth. it's going to be as bad as you guys think. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's not what you were texting, Seth. I should read the text live on air. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I um, I didn't love it. I, I found myself uh, fast forwarding through it. Um, oh. Now, part, I say parts. Right? I'll be honest. Well, Seth, can you set the scene? You're watching this with oh. Mrs. X, right? Your newfound love. Well, now eight oh. months in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah eight months in. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, this is the second Hallmark movie we watched together. 
Um, the okay. first one was a Christmas one, and it was like probably three or four months ago. So I might have shot myself in the foot by doing that and then going into mm -hmm. this. So even though it's the the holiday and everything, um, we're like, oh, we'll watch it. And she was very nice. And she's like, I'll watch it with you. And <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I guess I kept looking for something Christmassy. And then it was like, all right, I'm like, <laughs> no, this isn't a Christmas movie. And I'm like, all right, maybe a death wreath or something. Mm. Or, um, But yeah, it didn't really, I don't know. I couldn't really get on board. It, it was obviously formulaic as some of those movies are. And, um, and uh, Mrs. X watching it with a little bit of a critical eye. She might've influenced me a little bit. Oh, but, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Where is it? No, I was going to carry on. Seth has a film degree from Columbia, so he knows something about breaking down <laughs> film. So he may look at it with a different eye than than maybe I would. Mm. Uh, so it's interesting to say, but he is influenced now by Mrs. X. So she was watching it critically. Maybe that was some undue influence. I may not allow you to watch it with her, Seth. This may, uh, <laughs> uh -oh. you can't have anything no skew it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the story, and I think we, we've we seen the, a similar storyline we're going back to the past like the 17th 18th century and it's like reviving these uh literary characters i know they were literary characters but or historical figures and stuff like that and then they kind of run uh parallel storylines but it wasn't terrible it wasn't terrible but there was nothing that just i, I don't know like captured me i was just like i, I didn't there were any moments i rewinded and went back and was like i gotta see that again <laughs> I don't uh, know. Carrie, I'm going to read some of the text that Seth sent oh, me that may no. uh, belie what he's saying here. He's being a little nicer on air. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Trying to recover from that train wreck called A Haunted <laughs> Wedding. We watched it last night and Mrs. X dumped me three quarters of the way in. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's oh, how bad no. it was. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it was. Seth, I feel like you're being a little bit nicer. But Carrie, yeah. Seth recently just found out about buying autumn decor for his house, like getting an autumn throw rug and oh, an autumn welcome. pillow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> welcome to <laughs> this millennium. Great. So he yeah. went nice out. To be here. Can you update me, Seth? Did you surprise Mrs. X with your new th autumn, autumn th your autumnal throw pillow and, and pillows? How'd she like that? She liked it very much, and we have used it. So I got a pillow, I got one pillow, <laughs> and uh, a throw a throw blanket. So okay, oh things work gosh. really well. Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. Have you guys uh, also ventured into like Chicago Halloween or fall oh. activities? Has there been pumpkin picking? Um, no, that's uh, we haven't coordinated that, but they're apple picking. We we're okay. going apple picking uh, in the next two weeks. So okay, very. We can look forward to that. That's uh, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of great places out here, which I'm sure like out in New Jersey, there are too. You kind of go out in the uh, yeah with the Pine Barrens. Or no, that's where the dead bodies are. The uh, Seaside Heights dead Boardwalk dead is dead great apple, apple picking. Yeah, dead bodies <laughs> in the Pine Barrens. <laughs> Listen, it makes great sense. Enough. What you're saying totally makes sense. Any movie that's not a Christmas Hallmark movie, I know what you mean. Yeah. There's a little bit of a letdown because there's nothing like a Christmas Hallmark movie, especially you guys are the Christmas cousins. So it does track okay. what you're saying overall. I understand. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I get that because you are looking for that in the background. But that, that was just interesting, Seth, because I was like, oh, you'll really like it. So I watched this one with my wife and she doesn't really like the Hallmark movies. I like them much more. Um, so we sat down. Usually she'll leave like after the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes. This one, she sat down, watched the whole thing. We watched it in two parts, Saturday night and Sunday night and watched the end of it. And we both thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> and I found it was um, very original. I just liked that they had to pull the two together. I loved his uh, accent that he was doing. It kind of sounds like Seth's Scottish accent that, you know, we love a good bagpipe on this show. Um, and I, I just thought it was really charming that they had to come together as a couple and then bring another couple together and that they were related, you know, great, 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 great uncle or something. I thought the actor who played both roles was really good because he was convincing in both. So for me... I liked it. And I actually was like, okay, it's not just them getting together at the end, but how are they going to get them together physically? So I was, I was into it and I was surprised. So uh, I didn't ghost it either. Carrie. Yeah. I stuck <laughs> with it. And uh, so I liked it better than Seth. Now, Seth, with your new cozy autumnal blanket, another text mm -hmm. I got, Carrie, was the Seth setup as he watched the movie, but he's just learning how to get cozy on autumn because he sent it to me. <laughs> 
and it's freezing in Chicago at this point, and his feet are sticking out of the blanket. So oh, I'm just sitting there no. cold for him. <laughs> oh, no. Tell him your feet go under the blanket. We have you to gotta, teach this. You we gotta, you gotta tuck. I think when we were watching, I started with one blanket and I ended the movie with three. So I, um. I think you've really got to, you know what you guys need is a partnership with Hallmark stores so that they send yes. you lots of cozy autumn blankets and then you won't have to have your feet sticking out. That you would know? be great. Content yeah. Hallmark. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we know you're listening, Hallmark. If you're interested in our, our 26.2 million of your to of your your demographic who are listening. That's you know, right. let us know, and Absolutely. we can verify those numbers. Seth is has it written down on a notepad <laughs> with a hash marks and written <laughs> off. <laughs> so okay, so I liked it. Kerry liked it. Seth liked it more on air than in his text, but the text reveal all. <laughs> Carrie, he knows if he texts me something, it might make it on air. So he has to watch that. <laughs> I always do that little self uh, self editing before. <laughs> yeah. Well, where I do you like sending you the raw stuff too? <laughs> yeah, I do too. I like that. So, uh, Seth, are you going to be live tweeting this week for the opening Hallmark movie like you did last year? That was fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, they were promoting it like crazy. All the ads were for the countdown to Christmas. And I yeah. use yeah. that a little bit of a, a flex. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, they did 40 movies last year. I wonder how many they're going to do this year. She's like, what? <laughs> She's like, did you watch them all? I was like, no, I think I watched like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you told, you, he, he said he it? watched a lot more, Carrie. See what we find out live on air. Yeah, so, it's all coming next out. Season. <laughs> right. So here's our next segment. We're calling it Ghoul Goals, which is your favorite part. So which haunted your heart in a good way? What was your favorite movement? Whether it was a particularly spine chilling scene, a uh, hilarious bit of dialogue, or maybe an actor who just like killed it with their performance. And, and I don't mean killed it in the sense that we're dealing with goats, but killed it. So Carrie, what did you think here? Was there anything that stuck out to you performance wise, dialogue wise? I really liked Lauren Cochrane. She played the sassy best friend. Um, oh, so okay. she had a lot hat. of really great one-liners. That to me is really like evidence of Nina's writing. Like there's a lot of quippy, funny uh, lines that then Janelle could play off of. I really thought that she stood out a lot as the the kind of comedic relief. Oh, interesting. Okay, that was the redheaded best friend. If you're watching it, correct? Was yes. Yeah. Redhead? So she she would have played um, Rachel. Rachel, right? Yes, and, and Rachel she was ended like up with Steve. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. And Steve was kind of bumbling throughout the movie and, and, and trying to get back with her. I think they might have dated before. Or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that Rachel's character was just really funny because she was saying what all of us would be saying, which was like, why are you getting married here? Essentially, like, what do you not want to just I think she said at one point, like, can't you just get married at a ballroom in the Radisson? And I thought that was hysterical. Like that, that to me was exactly what I would be saying in this situation. So I think she really represented the audience in comparison to the kind of delusional main characters. Right. You guys could do this on your honeymoon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is yes, they brought some self No, they brought self-awareness, I guess, through her role, but which is good when a movie does that because they're calling out what we're thinking anyway instead of ignoring it, I guess. So Seth, was your favorite part fast forwarding, getting up and leaving? What was <laughs> the your end favorite credits. part? Stretching yes. my leg. <laughs> <laughs> turning my back to the screen and asking Mrs. X how much time is left. <laughs> um, oh, uh, was, I, I, I did the storyline of um, all that, uh, what was it, the, the son um, from the 18th century, I forgot his character's name, but he's Nothing. stuck in the, he's stuck in the bar. Um, oh, yeah. And it's just like, that's, you know, it was just like, all right, that's where you're going to spend eternity. And um, I don't know. It was just, I mean, you felt you felt bad for him. And then it was like, I don't know. I like it. the Cindy Brady theory. Uh, right. <laughs> okay. All right. No. So, Seth, your um, favorite part was that he was stuck in a bar for eternity? Well, no, I mean, that was his place. And you kind of, I mean, you see how he was struggling with it. A very small, uh, brief uh, shot of a glimpse of what he was going through. I guess there are worse places to be stuck, right? That's right. Yeah. But to, to, to see what he's seen, I imagine, for being there for <laughs> well, <what> centuries. <laughs> I want to know what he did for the previous, because we're talking 248 years ago was the Revolutionary War or something like that, depending on right. when he got killed. Uh, what did he do? The bar is probably only 20 years old. 
what did he do in the intervening 230 years or what was there? Like oh. he might've been stuck in an industrial warehouse or something. That's it a really good question. Right. Yeah. So happy when they built a bar. <laughs> like, geez, <'cause, laughs> yeah. All the other things that's been. <laughs> yeah. They always take like abandoned warehouses and then build those things. So that's I want to know what Malcolm was doing. And I'm not going to go through a decade of EDM music. <laughs> yeah. <and> dancing <laughs> oh poor that would have been great malcolm mm -hmm. on molly that's a whole nother episode <laughs> so a uh, next third so we're at the least favorite part called the phantom flop so every haunting has its moments what part of the movie made you feel like you were just watching paint dry in a haunted house you can call out the scene or the subplot or something that should have been laid to rest let's just say so seth you can't say the whole thing either <laughs> no, okay, okay. <laughs> that was particularly bad or, or stood out to you i did not really understand why they had janelle's character sing not once but twice that seemed odd to me like it didn't seem mm -hmm. like this character had any connection to singing she sang a little in the bar and then right. she sang you know in the wedding and both of those times i thought this character like they've painted her as an academic they've painted her as a ghost hunter they've painted her as someone who's very like introspective and has a lot of feelings but at no point were they like and she loves karaoke you know or she <laughs> right. does community theater for fun like it just seemed right. like kind of an odd um i was i was thinking maybe she's releasing a song or maybe you know maybe like they're trying to work that into her career or maybe she has i don't i don't know her career that well but um yeah i was like oh wait are they trying to paint her as a singer or is this just a weird thing that was written in twice so i don't know if i needed the the singing was yeah, it wasn't really connected to anything. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was odd. Seth, carry with the knives out here with this a dissecting. Yeah. Oh, this I see what no. you did there. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, gotcha. <no>. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hollywood Reporter, you heard it. Mm. Carrie's bashing her fellow actress, Janelle Parrish. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, no, this show no. makes headlines. <laughs> no, I no. know. I'm kidding. Oh, my gosh. Do, what do you guys think? Yeah, Seth, what do you think here? Your least um, favorite part. The beginning. I think some of the, you know, right. When I had to sit down and knew I had to endure this whole thing. Um, I saw it was two hours. I think some of the things that Angelique did to like, you know, frighten them away or scare them away, they weren't like really big things. I mean, she could have gone a lot bigger. It was like, you know, causing, I think uh, the guy tripped her with the holding the pastries or something. And, you know, it's right, general yeah. just messing stuff up. And it was like, all right, you could do a little bit more of a haunting than that. Mm. Imagine. Uh, okay, right. Like, good point. Like just, yeah, they like just messed up the cupcakes. What would you have done, Seth? Well, they <laughs> extract someone's soul or something. I don't know. <laughs> what do people do with these? <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I just, I, I maybe, I know it's Hallmark, but I think they could have leveled up a little bit. I know they want to keep, you know, the uh, anxiety or stress level when you're watching these movie, right? You know, nice and even or balanced, but right. <laughs> okay. Well, for me, my least favorite part was they're sitting here trying to help this lady who's been stuck for a couple of hundred years. And at every turn when they messed up, she was so mean and angry and acrimonious towards them. I'm like, lady, look, no one else is trying to get you out of your, your purgatory. Number one. Number two, sorry, they don't have experience saving souls that are stuck here <laughs> in, in, ter, in between. And like, how about be a little nice and a little patient? Because otherwise they could change the venue and you're stuck here for another couple hundred years till someone else finds you. So I was like, be a little bit appreciative. That was my only thought with that one. She was mean and I didn't like it. Yeah. She was a Karen, a ghost Karen. <laughs> yeah. Like, cool. That's a really good point too. It never occurred to me that they could just say, you know what? Best of luck. We're out. Mm -hmm. Like this is not worth this stress to me. So that's a really mm -hmm. good, really good point. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Really? I think if this is a ghost, a Jersey ghost, a Jersey mm. girl ghost, she wasn't putting up with that at all. No way. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. She's been waiting a very long time and at her mm -hmm. limit. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's it. <laughs> so our next segment. I like these segments. This is nice. Moving it along here. Um, so this we call. Uh, the weirdest or most ridiculous moment. Wow, what a great title, Chad. Really came up with that one. Uh, so we have, uh, there are different gaffes, ghostly gaffes, if you will, plot twists that make no sense. So was there a weirdest or most ridiculous part of the movie? I know we kind of covered that in least favorite, but did something make you laugh for the wrong reason or something that was scratching your head? So what do you think yeah. here? Let's spill the ectoplasm. That little say. like weird house thing, the house model yes. with the 
that yes. like blew up in the bar and that they were so even that guy as a whole i thought every time he popped up another scene i thought surely he's left by now the the kind right. of fake ghost hunter and then he just kept popping back up um but yeah when he brought out that little house and they took it to the bar and it blew up and they looked like the chimney sweeps and mary poppins that was <laughs> that was an interesting segment Good call. That was mm. ridiculous. Yeah. And thinking it would work too. I actually, Seth, before we go to you, I mm -hmm. have to go along with this because this is my exact same thought, Carrie. Oh my gosh. You know, they, they, they bring this guy in who they know is a scam. They confirmed mm. he was a scam. Then they brought mm. him in and he showed he was a scam. He couldn't see them. So the guy goes, let's bring him back in. Maybe he'll help. They know he's a scam. <laughs> it was so weird. Yes. So I'm with you. It was ridiculous. Yes. Um, the house is adorable. I would like that as a decoration. Um, but I'm with you. That's exactly what I got too. Seth, what was your uh, your your weirdest or most ridiculous moment? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> going with the party line, but it's a uh, yeah that um, that house thing. <laughs> that oh my just, gosh! I don't know. And I, I guess his uh, the contacts that they had to make. You know, it's like to, in order to get them together, it was just like they're kind of a stretch, and we're just like I don't know. Right. It was like for like, okay, there's like a black hole that develops in like the wall or something, and they go into that. You know, that's yeah. how they. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you got to get this to her, but you got to get him in this little house. And then he's. It was... <laughs> <laughs> did yeah. you guys feel bad with that coin when it rolled in i i legitimately felt bad i, I felt something from that coin they had not the coin the uh, metal that the guy won they paid twenty four hundred dollars and rolled down the gutter yeah yes i that was oh, close to the I, I remember fast forward right as that happened i was like oh like this is the bad feeling and i just fast forward a big chunk right there okay. yeah <laughs> that's the same part where i started to like flip through hgtv magazine and okay futz right. around a little and i will tell you at the end because i am here visiting my mom which is why she's made now a recurring appearance in me talking about her on the podcast <laughs> but um she said at the end well do you want to know all of my thoughts because i know you're preparing oh. for your podcast and i said Sure, I absolutely do. And she does this every time we watch a Hallmark movie. She'll even call me sometimes and say, okay, here's what I thought about this movie. Oh, and yeah. um, we, Can we have Mama Francis on one day? That'd be fun. Have you guys would love her. On. She's hysterical in her, and she is wow. ruthless. Like, there's no, Ooh, okay. there's no like, oh, do I know anyone in this and I need to be extra nice? No, no. Yeah. Um, even if it's me <laughs> no, that fun. she knows in it. Ruthless. Okay, um, <laughs> Carrie, I will be. Uh, I'll be reaching out. We need to have Carrie and Mama Francis on. Maybe one of the November movies or something. That'd be so be fun. fun. Yeah. She. Um. Okay. So she told me at the very end. She said, "I found him to be extremely bumbling." And I said, "The main character." And she said, "Yeah. Like, how many times does he have to do things?" And then he knocked the coin into the gutter, and I just couldn't <laughs> take it. <laughs> I thought, okay, that's. It's a good point, though. If I just paid twenty four hundred dollars and my fiance was just so clumsy and knocked this mm. really important thing into a gutter of all places. I, I would be out. Like I would say, I need to go take 10 minutes in the car and do some belly breaths and um, I'll be back <laughs> in a minute, you know? Yes. And I liked, uh, I did like that. Um, the bartender, he's been in these things before. He always comes off as a little oh, yeah. ridiculous. He was kind of cool around this one. He was just like, they're like, okay, we'll bring the metal back. He's like, you just pay 2,400, do whatever you want with it. I don't care. So I was like, that's realistic at least. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I did. I did feel bad on that. Okay, so now two more segments were out. We've got the next one is fixer upper. How would you change it? So, Kerry, was there anything that you would have changed to make this a little bit better? Or did you like it just how it was? We're giving think, it a haunted makeover. Yeah, I think that maybe I would have tightened up some of the dialogue. I really like the quippier dialogue, and I wonder if maybe I would have had them both lost on the same property. So that we Ooh. didn't have to keep going out to the bar, but maybe we were just running between a really interesting barn in the backyard into the main house. I think that could have been very funny to watch them run across the yard right, a lot right. or not have <laughs> this like extra location that we didn't really need um, to have as much. So yeah, I would have made it a little bit closer in location and maybe up those hijinks just a touch. That's a great point, Carrie, because she's stuck in a historic an historic building mm -hmm. for a couple hundred years. He's stuck in like a 20 year old building. So again, we don't know what happened. Like she right. would make sense that she would be haunt. No one haunts like new breweries. They're just not like, right. don't go to a new condo that's been built in 2010 and it's haunted. It doesn't happen. <laughs> so, right. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. 
Seth, what would you do? You're a film auteur. Ghosts hanging around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, dude, they're nice places. I mean, they're efficient. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, turn into a Christmas movie. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> had Christmas decor. Uh, yeah, I, it's. Um, I, I don't really feel. I, I don't know. Uh, place it somewhere on the sea, somewhere else in the season, but yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, what you're saying, um, Seth, is the way you'd make it better was when I originally asked you to do a podcast with me, you'd say no. That's <laughs> your <laughs> ultimate <laughs> threat. We're just sticking solely to Christmas. Perfect. Um, right. I don't know. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of like points where I would be interested in one of the characters' stories. I think maybe when she was left at the altar. It could start in between that. I don't know. That's a great time idea. Lapse or something. Yeah. It's, right. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Show more of the historic stuff. So we saw them back together more. That would have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe make the uh, the other story of the two ghost hunters. I don't know. Secretary. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like do flashbacks right. to <laughs> her past relationship and kind of work that in as well. That's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that was. Uh, I say I like historical stuff, so maybe that right. <laughs> that different angle, but I, I like that. Side. Okay, well, for me, what I, what I would do to change it was I hated uh, that where they didn't want to tell the family that it was like a haunted place. Like the oh. family knows they're wacky; they're getting mm. married at an, a haunted inn. They know that they're like Ghostbusters, and yeah. <laughs> why are they hiding it from them? It made that annoying. Like the haunted hayride wasn't funny. That was just kind of annoying. All those things, like trying to hide it from them and keep them, that was just ridiculous because it's their yes. own parents they would know right yeah. mama francis oh. would know if you were a ghost buster i think i blocked that out that was such okay. a terrible part yeah i right. think i literally forgot about it until you just said it that's a really yeah. really good point to to change that out that would we didn't need that it didn't make any sense right. like that'd be like if you didn't ever want to tell your family that you had a podcast and so anytime right. you had a big family event they were like what are you guys up to you're like absolutely not nothing podcasting right. we're not into <laughs> microphones and <laughs> you know it just seems so yes you're absolutely right with that point to change that Right. Your family knows. Actually, there's some people in our family we did hesitate to tell them about the show until about sure. episode 100, but now they know. So. <laughs> right. Ease them in. They didn't find them yeah. yeah. That's how it goes. So let's rate this. How many out of five, whatever you want to call it, we'll put a number on it. We'll make it fun, whatever you want to do. Pumpkins, ghosts, Halloween candy, phantom fright fests. So was it out of five? Did it barely scrape by? Was it good? What did you guys think? Carrie, what's your overall rating as someone who's in the biz, who mm -hmm. can really look at this with a critical eye? And, and, you know, you don't have to yeah. be nice because, you know, I know you're in with the Hollywood crowd, but don't worry. This is yeah, we space. need all these people to like me and hire me. So, no, That's right. um, <laughs> I would give it 3.2 festive 90s Halloween decor. Oh, wow. I love Very that. Very specific. Yeah. 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 Like some of the okay. things behind me in this video. Wow. Now, is that from when you were growing up, like the same stuff or is that retro? It is the same stuff. Yeah, it is. Wow. It's, it's like a time machine when I come visit. So... Yeah, wow. yeah, oh, that, yeah. That is fun when you go home. When I go home to visit my uh, dad's house at the Jersey Shore, I stay at my same bed I grew up in, <laughs> the same oh. little bed and everything, and still uh, sleep so well there. Seth, you know that room. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, okay, so Seth, what were you ranking it? Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> Well, I am not bound by any uh, professional uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> relations to the industry, so I can uh, I can kind of go into Mama Francis's camp and I can say anything <laughs> unabashed. That's right. But I, I think I'm going to have to give it three half-hearted hauntings. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's three um, out of five. Oh, that's higher than I thought you would do. So yeah, me too. It was uh, it was nice to I think. Yeah, to get back into watching the movies. I like all the commercials for the build up for the countdown of Christmas. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And there, there were some funny parts. And uh, yeah, so it wasn't a complete waste. <laughs> okay. Wow. It was, okay. It it was, was, I, so that's higher than I thought. So we have a storyline to kept us going. There, I, I've seen a lot worse. <laughs> so. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I think because of your tech, Seth, he really sent me like, I was like, oh no, Seth is leaving the show. Like it was bad. So, <laughs> I'm glad. Don't Sorry worry, Carrie. That. I have other cousins waiting in the wings. They've been trying to off <laughs> Seth ever since he got booked on this show. So no, I believe it. It's cutthroat. Yeah. Mm. 
really Am I is. wrong, Seth? No, and cousin no. Howe and cousin Ashley try to you know try to off you, push you off that mm-hmm. bridge that time. Yeah, I know. Well, that's that just typical true. New Jersey activities, though. That's <laughs> exactly. just that a Sunday yeah. in New Jersey. Right, that's true. That is no big deal. Well, I uh, have to say. I really liked it. And I'm kind of gauging it by the fact that my wife watched the entire movie, which she normally walks out. Uh, and I was like excited to watch the second half of it. So I'm going to give this one. And normally I don't like the haunted ones. I don't like any of the paranormal. I like the small towns. It's realistic, all that. I'm giving this a 4.2 fat, f- 4.2 out of 5 wow. Phantom Fright Fest. I liked it. Oh my yes. God. I, Very good. That's high for a fall Hallmark movie. That's a really great score. It was, and I'm judging, I'm, I'm gauging that because I, the whole way I was kind of where you guys tuned out, I was like in, I was into it. I had a, uh, we were drinking a pumpkin spice, like cream liqueur kind of thing with the fire. Mm-hmm. It was really hot out. Uh, and, you know, same thing with the blanket going. So I think the whole thing, it was dark. It was a good fall scene that all helped as well. Um, so that's it. That was my rating. Overall, a fun movie. I, I don't know. I, I liked it. And, and you guys didn't hate it, which is good. So yeah. No, and it was neat to see something Halloween. I feel like we see fall. We see yes. farms. We see apple picking. We see horses. But we rarely see actual Halloween. So that was a special that's treat right. as well. Yeah, it was a good segue between their fall stuff and their Christmas things, which start in just a few days, which is wild. Oh my gosh. Right into it. I know. It's, it's very early. Exciting. It is. It is. Are you going to watch? Do you, do you watch all of them, Carrie? Do you watch a handful? Of the I watch all of them want? and I watch all of them more than once. Like I do not oh. play about these movies. Yes, I'm very, nice. very excited. And um, I agree about the commercials. Every time I see the commercials, I because you forget day to day how soon this is starting, and I'll see yes. the commercial on, and I'm like, oh, it's so soon, <laughs> you know. So I think that's something, especially as we get into our slower months and their colder months, it's just such a special treat to have yes. a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday new movie, all Christmas themed, really get that Christmas spirit um, going. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna watch it and. Um, hopefully go to some of the events and, and see all of the Hallmark friends. So it'll oh, be so fun. That. Do you go to Christmas con or anything? Yeah, I I've definitely gone. I've been sent a couple times, um, you know, partnering with them, but I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm going to go this year or not, because now that I'm on the West coast, it's, it became a little trickier to do right. that. Um, but I have a, I have an email that needs to go out to decide if I'm going to do it or not. So we'll see. Are you guys going to go? Do you go to any of the Hallmark related events? We haven't yet. Uh, and I don't, I don't think we're, they, they are in Jersey, actually the one in December, but it was so mm-hmm. close to the holiday itself. I was like, we go away as a family. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't know that I want to commit. It's to a that tricky, when I tricky now. time. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And also the, the actual Hallmark ones now this year are in Kansas or they're yes. on cruise ships. And that's a really tricky thing to also fit into scheduling so i always say if i'm invited and everything's like you know free like you know when when i go to christmas con and they just give me the passes that's great right. i'll do that you know but yeah. right. i i'm not right before the christmas like gonna say oh let me buy a cruise vacation right now um but right. everyone else is i'm really thrilled at how popular these things have become so. i know it's so fun i'm sure mm-hmm. at some point seth will they'll be reaching out and begging us to come to this convention right. especially you i don't know about me seth but at least you so carrie please do cruises. us a favor yes yeah, so we've been on cruises before seth and i this uh-huh. uh, europe and bermuda and it's been wild you'd have to yeah. behave though fun, you guys would have to be uh-huh. on top tier professional behavior so yeah. you know think that mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. oh, yeah. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> That's a tough war. Yes. Oh That's my god. Definitely uh, not us. So the um, so Carrie, please look at the schedule. Talk to Mama Francis and let us know what movie is she most excited for. If she would come back and join us. We would. Oh my god, to I totally will. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, figure it out for when I'm when I'm back visiting in December. We'll have to get one of those. Oh, I love that. Uh, or she okay. could zoom in. She could zoom in. Yeah. She's, she she's got it. So you absolutely. Do <laughs> yeah, really. Pick a movie and uh and let us know. That would be a lot of fun. And everybody listening, check out Kerry Francis. She's going to be she's in Knives Out one and two. She's going to be in part three. She's been in Hallmark movies, she's been in all different movies. Uh she's adapting books, she's producing, she's singing, she has a Christmas song out. Kerry, what's the name of that song again? For Christmas. 
for Christmas. Yeah. So by Kerry Francis. So check that out. Um, and we'll link all this all, or we'll, we'll, we'll play it. We'll figure it out. Right, Seth. And by we, I mean, I will figure that all out. And <laughs> You're already working on it. I can see it. In your already, head. already on it. Yeah. And social media, you guys are so great about posting and I post on my social media all the time, which is Carrie Francis official. And, um, official. yeah, I just love F-R- coming on this. It's F R A N C E S. I just want so people know, not I. That's exactly right. Yeah, Carrie with a K, Francis with an E. That's that's how that's it's it. spelled so out. And uh, thank you, Carrie, for being a, a, a supporter of the Christmas cousins as well, and joining us again. It's so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. I loved it. It's a really, really great time. And next time, Seth, I think you're going to love whatever movie we chat about next time. Yeah. I have a sneaking suspicion. <laughs> You never know. Me after me, correct. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh it. We'll gosh. love the next one. No. Yeah, oh exactly. We'll see. We'll find out. Well, here we go. A little, uh, a little tribute. Oh yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and check us out at Christmas Cousins Pod and Christmas Cousins Pod at gmail.com. 